Shalom family. I got to talk to you about this subject here. I was, you know, I'm always on YouTube watching a lot of good work that a lot of the brothers and sisters are doing, different videos on um, the Hebrew Israelites, uh, just archaeology, genealogy, history, all of it. I, I take it all in. Current events, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, all of that. Reparations, I, I take in everything. I was watching a video the other day. And this brother, the video was deep, so deep. And he was talking about UFOs. I mean, he was going way deep. I'm not going to mention the brother's name or the name of the video. I'll let you look it up. But he was going into government intelligence, government secrets. And uh, I don't want to get into trouble uh, with any of that. So I'll let you friends look that up. But... It's a theory that I've had in my head for quite a while. And when I saw his video, it some of it makes sense to me. And I want to share with you what I my take is on it. But I want to uh, ask you, brothers and sisters, a question. Because there's so much been going on lately about UFOs. It's been going on for a minute. It's going all the way back to the 1930s. Uh, you remember Orson Welles. They, had, they did a radio program about uh, War of the Worlds. And... People thought it was real when they turned on the radio back in 1938. They thought it was a real attack of Martians. And people were getting in their cars, getting their families together, and they were just taking off. And then come to find out it was just a radio uh, program. And then, we, uh, in fact, uh, we got a little video about that here. This was uh, Orson Welles here. And even news reporters were coming up to him asking him, you know, uh, you know, and he had to tell him, "Well, I didn't mean to cause that panic. I didn't mean to do that. It was just a, it was just a radio show." And then we had the movie. Uh, remember the movie called uh, "The Day the Earth Stood Still," 1951, when it was talking about a, an alien ship had come to the U.S. and uh, it came to Washington D.C. and people were just amazed by it. And then uh, there was one scene where, when it first landed, you remember that? If any of you remember seeing the movie, I remember it. Um, the the army came up and they had their guns and their tanks aimed at the aliens and he just boop 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 just destroyed their their uh, guns and their tanks and uh, they were talking about peace making peace so after I saw that video last night friends I wanted to talk with you about what would you think if one day uh, a UFO came or even several of them, and let's just say they said that they were Jesus Christ. Okay, would you believe it? Because many people would go crazy and they would believe it. Or maybe they wouldn't go that far and say they were Jesus Christ. Maybe a UFO or several of them would come and they would say, we are, we've been sent from God. We've been sent from heaven, from God. We are one of the angels. We are several angels, and we're here to, to let you know that... Um, we're going to be with you all, and there's going to be peace, peace and security. We're going to get together with your nations, and we're going to have peace. Or maybe it didn't even have anything to do with religion at all. Maybe some UFOs came, and some aliens came out of there. <laughs> some aliens came out of there and, uh, and says, uh, you know, hey, you don't even have to believe in religion anymore because we come from a far distant galaxy, and we're going to break it down to you. And uh, science is going to be much more stronger than this religion that you all have been believing in all these years. Get rid of that religion, that religious stuff, faith and all that. This is much deeper what we're going to break down to you, all this technology. Would you all believe that? So that's what I wanted to talk to you all about today because there's been some things that have happened. Um, there's even on Wikipedia, there's a, a uh, section called UFO Religion. And it talks about all the different uh, cults that are out there that believe in UFOs connected to the Bible. Uh, there's one example here I'll uh, show you of uh, called Church of the Subgenius, founded in 1979. And these folks here, they believe that July 5th, 1998 was the day that um, uh, that ex extraterrestrial race were scheduled to launch a worldwide invasion of Earth. That's what they said there. They were going to have a worldwide invasion of Earth that it was going to occur on July 5th, 1998. Of course, it didn't happen. 
It says here, the day of the scheduled evasion came and they went without an appearance by the exist. That was the name of the aliens that were supposed to come. But the church remembers, it says, remain unconvinced. The church now holds, notice this, the church now holds annual X day celebrations on July 5th every year. So that's how deep those members are into that. And then there was another incident that occurred. Um, maybe you heard about this. This was, this was way back in 1975, and I remember this as a, as a kid. And uh, yeah, I remember reading this way back in the day in 1975, and I had uh, some relatives down in Oregon, and uh, I uh, had them look up some information for me, one of them, and they sent this to me. This was in their Oregonian newspaper uh, back in October 1975, it was talking about six vanished after meeting with other world pair at the coast. They went to Newport, Oregon, oh, so many miles away from San Francisco. And this was a picture that was in the paper, this couple here. And they sent me that, and I remember that, and it shocked me to my core. I was a teenager at the time, but they were talking about these. this couple here was saying that they claimed that they were getting people ready for Jesus Christ's return. And the name of the lady, her name was uh, uh, Bonnie Lee uh, Nettles. And the man's name was Marshall Applewhite. And this was in 1975. I'll never forget that picture when they showed that to me. But it's amazing. Fast forward. And you, if you fast forward to the year 1997, do you remember Heaven's Gate? It was a group, 39 followers committed mass suicide. Well, guess what? The leader was that man named, uh, what was his name? Uh, Marshall Applewhite. He was the leader of this group. And they believed that they were going to get on that comet called uh, Haley Bop was supposed to be coming. And they committed suicide because they believed that their bodies would get attached to this comet and they would go and meet um their Lord Christ Jesus in the in the heavens there. This is for real. This is for real. So there's all these things that uh, people believe in this, and it's called UFO uh, religion. So, in fact, here's an article on the Internet called, uh, If We Made Contact with Aliens, How Would Religions React? How Would Religions React? Very interesting, and... The person who wrote this article made a very interesting point here. He says, uh, if I can find the quote here that he was talking about. Yeah, he says here that uh, if we made contact, he says we would need to consider whether our face could, could accommodate these new beings or if it should shake our beliefs to the core. Isn't that something? if it should shake our beliefs to the core. And another point they brought out in the article was, they mentioned this here, it says that this could present the greatest challenge to the major Abrahamic religions, which teach that human beings are purposely created by God and occupy a privileged position in the relation to other creatures. So, that could actually shake people's faith if aliens did come and claim that they were from another source, different technology. You don't need religion anymore. We got this. We got you. Here was another article here. Could an alien deception be part of the end times? Interesting. So I just wanted to bring this up to you, friends, um, this today because it, it was really on my mind after I saw that one video. So the reason why I wanted to mention it is because we know the scriptures say that uh, first, the first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2 and 3, you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and security, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But then also think about the scripture in uh, Matthew 24, 21 through 24. It says, For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not occurred since the world's beginning until now. 
no nor will occur again in fact unless those days were cut short no flesh would be saved but on account of the chosen ones those days will be cut short then if anyone says to you look here is the christ or there do not believe it for false christs and false prophets will arise and will perform this is the point friends will perform great signs and wonders so as to mislead if possible even the chosen ones and then we go over to second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 it says but the lawless one's presence is by the operation of satan with every powerful work and lying signs and wonders and every unrighteous deception for those who are perishing so see satan can do anything that he can to try to get people to get off course and to believe a different way instead of following the Hamashiach Yeshua because he is returning. And uh, we know that uh, the scriptures do talk about even Constantine. He saw supposedly a sign of the cross in the sky. And he said, by this sign I will conquer. Well, see, that was saying the demons that put that cross up there. So the demons can do anything, friends. They can do anything. So just want to put that out there, let you all meditate about that, but don't fall for the okie doke because, like I said, Satan will do any type of misleading uh, sign to get people to fall away. So don't let it happen to you. Let's stay awake.